Climate change is a hot topic. Most climate models agree that humanity's current actions will have relatively little effect on the expected climate in the year 2050, so there is little variation in predicted outcomes. Let's fast forward to see what the world will look like in 2050. The world population is now 9.7 billion people. Carbon dioxide levels are at around 500 parts per million. Global temperatures have increased by 2 degrees since pre-industrial times. This increase in temperature disproportionately affects the globe. Coastal areas are less affected than interior areas. June to August have the largest temperature increase. Sea levels have risen by 30 centimeters so far this century. The southern Brazilian Amazon lost 56% of its forests due to weak governance. This widespread deforestation caused a decrease in rainfall in the region. Globally, mean annual precipitation has decreased by 11%. 68% of the world's population now lives in urban areas, up from 55% in 2018. On average, cities in the Northern Hemisphere today have climates like cities more than 620 miles south had three decades ago. There is a shift of warmer temperatures north by about 12 miles per year. Cities are struggling to provide adequate water and cooling, and increased air pollution has led to an increase in heat stress and respiratory disorders such as asthma. Air conditioning decreases heat stress, but makes air pollution worse. Cities have implemented some strategies that majorly decrease heat-related mortality. There are now enhanced tree canopies and more reflective surfaces that absorb less heat. As always, those living in poverty and other vulnerable individuals, such as the elderly, are hit hardest by heat waves. But fortunately, early warning and response systems make heat waves far less deadly. Here in Europe, temperatures have increased year-round, with average increases of 3.5 degrees Celsius in summer and 4.7 degrees Celsius in winter, compared to 2000. London, which used to be damp and cold earlier in this century, is now as hot and dry as Barcelona was. There has also been an increase in infectious diseases such as vector-borne and waterborne diseases. Mental health disorders such as PTSD and depression are rising due to more frequent natural disasters. It's estimated that in 2010, there were 3.3 million premature deaths due to air pollution. In 2050, there are 6.6 .6 million deaths, 358,000 of which are from ozone. Mortality due to air pollution was 50% higher in urban environments in 2010. Today, it's 90% higher in urban environments. The heat has increased the number of lost workdays in many parts of the world. Near the equator, in Southeast Asia, West and Central Africa, and Central America, there has been an 18% increase in lost workdays. Reduced work capacity has hit the economy hard, especially outdoor workers. 25 million more children are undernourished compared to 2020, and the prevalence of stunted growth is increasing. Food prices are increasing rapidly, especially for staples like corn and rice, whose prices are double what they were three decades ago. Plant diseases have increased substantially, while the nutrient value of some crops has diminished. Protein content in wheat and rice has decreased, as has iron and zinc in rice, soybeans, wheat, and peas. We've tried to mediate this by increasing crop diversity, planting drought and salt-resistant crops, using drip irrigation and greenhouses. Food production, processing, transport, and marketing are consistently disrupted by changes in rainfall and temperature, increasingly frequent and damaging weather anomalies, as well as growing numbers of pests and diseases. Poor diet causes decreased earning potential and increased healthcare costs, and families get trapped in a multi-generational cycle of poverty. The difference between the rich and poor grows ever larger. Extreme weather events result in forced migration and exacerbate tensions around scarce fresh water and fish stocks. Political instability grows hand in hand with food scarcity. Cities in the tropics experience less of a temperature increase than ones nearer the poles, but there are now more frequent extreme precipitation events and droughts are more severe. Drought is one of the most widely damaging climate conditions causing and exacerbating water and food security issues. Regions like the Middle East are hotter and drier than ever, putting a great deal of stress on food production. The increased frequency and intensity of droughts has also resulted in increased dust activity. North Africa is the main hub of dust generation, followed by Central Asia and China. 
Dust from Africa accelerates algal blooms in the southeast coast of the U.S., harming marine life. Humans don't do well with the dust either. Inhaling this dust has significant health impacts, causing and exacerbating cardiopulmonary conditions. Chronic exposure is associated with silicosis, asthma, cognitive decline, Alzheimer's disease, and arsenic toxicity. It's associated with valley fever in the U.S., meningitis in North Africa, and tuberculosis in India. Increased drought has also resulted in much more prevalent wildfires. The particulates from these fires cause hundreds of thousands of premature deaths each year. On the one hand, there are droughts. On the other, there are heavier precipitation events. Heavier precipitation events result in more waterborne diseases. For example, heavy rain can result in sewage overflow, which results in an increase in gastrointestinal illness. Flood water overflows with viruses. In addition to an increase in waterborne diseases, a warmer climate results in increased exposure to vector-borne diseases. This is because rising temperatures change the rates of survival and reproduction of vectors and pathogens. In the first 20 years of the 21st century, 50% of corals died. Today, in 2050, 90% are dead. This is due to many factors, including overfishing, destructive fishing, watershed pollution, marine pollution, coastal development, thermal stress, and ocean acidification. The death of coral reefs is a heavy blow, since they are a keystone species. This means that they have a disproportionately high impact on their ecosystem, and can be a deciding factor on whether the entire ecosystem survives or not. In the case of coral reefs, 25% of ocean fish rely on them. They protect our coastlines from erosion, are nurseries for fish, and harbor plankton that produce oxygen. Furthermore, half a billion people rely on coral reefs for food, income, and protection. Fish stocks have plummeted due to overfishing, pollution, warming oceans, and ocean acidification. Catches in the tropics declined 40% from 2012. Hundreds of millions of people in Africa and Southeast Asia rely on these fish, and this is exacerbated by climate change's impact on agricultural production. Earlier in the 21st century, we were already getting more than half of our fish from farms. However, this has increased dramatically. This is a problem since these fish farms are very polluting. Toxic runoff from these farms fertilizes ocean algae, and this causes eutrophication. This reduces oxygen availability to other animals and creates dead zones. Fish farms are also breeding grounds for parasites and infections that also infect wild populations. The fish are treated with antibiotics, but there is an increasing antibiotic resistance. As the smaller fish that these farmed fish used to be fed have declined due to overfishing, the farmed fish are increasingly fed a vegetarian diet, so they now lack the omega-3 oils that made them so nutritious in the past. Although humanity's current actions will not have much effect on the expected climate in the year 2050, our actions do have a dramatic impact on the climate predictions for the year 2100.